Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Bolt City Podcast. Dave Palais, Josh Palais, Mario Heron. Of course, as we said, getting ready for the NFL draft. Uh, just some uh, news for you throughout the show. Want to remind you, as I normally say, hey, click that like button and of course subscribe. I, this is big news though for us as we are going to continue doing the show throughout the Charger season and talk Charger football with you as we're excited about Jim Harbaugh's first year. There's a very good chance that the name of the show could be changing. And you're going, okay, what does that mean for me? It means how do you find the show? So as far as the name of the show changing, I ask that you follow us on social media. You can see it right there on your screen. You can follow us on Twitter right there at Dave Palais, at Josh Palais. Uh, Mario, I don't know your Twitter handle. There it is, at Mario. Uh, it's at Mario23 underscore Heron. Way to make come. it easy on everybody. Thanks, Mario. Good, uh, yeah. Got any more yeah, things you want to throw in there? So uh, there you go. It's right there at the bottom of the sick. screen. Say that again. <laughs> I'm just what did you sick. say? You said throw some else in there. So uh, again, follow us on social media. We've had fantastic followers that have paid attention to the show and it's been great doing these live shows has been a lot of fun. We look forward to continue doing this as well. But again, we're really excited about Jim Harbaugh's first year and we believe this is the beginning of something great, something Charger fans, of course, have waited a lifetime for. And that's why we want to continue doing the show with you, the audience. So there are things we, we're going to talk about, of course, today. Talking, of course, about the NFL draft. A couple things I want to throw at you guys to start things off, okay? I have a couple people in front of me on their draft predictions, and I want to ask you out of these guys, which one do you say, hey, I, I like that move. I agree with that move. I think that's what's going to happen, okay? I'm going to start off with with NFL.com, uh, Gennaro Felice, okay, if I got that right. He has the Chargers guys trading pick five to Minnesota, and with that, the Chargers would get at number 11, J.C. Latham. That's Mario's guy right there from Alabama. And also at 23, they would get Brian Thomas, wide receiver at LSU. Huh. I would swap those two guys. I think Brian Thomas is more likely to go at 11 and J.C. Latham at 23. I would be happy with that. Would you guys be happy with that? Mario, what do you say? Uh, I mean, just, I'm happy with one, just getting a wide receiver and one getting in alignment. Like I'm happy to build both that in one kind of round, I guess, especially on the offensive side. That's really, really weak right now. And I never thought I'd say this, but our defense is the strongest part of our team. Who would have thought? Yeah. I'm fine with going that in reverse order or even go with a even better receiver, maybe in that order. Like I'm, if we get a Duze right there too, like I'm fine with that. He's more of a traditional wide out. I'm fine with either one. I think we get those two picks, though, Dave. I think we're in a pretty sexy spot. Okay, so here's another one for you. All right, you mentioned Aduze. Here we go. This is Nick Wright has this one. Chargers make two trades. They trade with Minnesota, and then they trade with Atlanta. So the Chargers will be picking at number eight, and he has Roma Duze. And then at number 23 with the Vikings pick, he has J.C. Latham. Do you like that? I like that even more because I'm going to take Rome as the number three receiver. Everybody will tell you nowadays that Rome is the third best receiver. Some people have him as number two ahead of Malik Neighbors. So we can get somebody that great and help with the right tackle spot because Trey Pipkins has not been it. I'd be happy about that, Mario. J.C. Latham, I, I was told, is unathletic. I go, well, what do you want the right tackle to do? Like do backflips? The guy's fine. As long as you can block people and do your job, I don't care how athletic you are and to me i didn't see him as an unathletic guy i would love for the chargers to have two guys that will start from day one right because if you're, you're gonna have a first round pick they both better be starting day one that's yes. how it works so yes i'm cool with it okay i'm i'm cool with that as well all right here we go sporting news has the chargers mm -hmm. keeping the number five pick and taking brock bowers see i'm not cool with that right now because, you know, I think we could trade down and get Brock Bowers from what I've heard, from what I've looked at, what I've seen, what I've heard. Um, I want Brock Bowers for sure. But if we could trade down a few spots and get another first round pick or a second round pick and still get Brock Bowers, I'd prefer that. Go ahead, Mara. What do you say? I, I'm kind of with you. I mean, obviously, Bowers, you know, we've preached all season long, especially shortly after the season. Yes, Bowers at five, Bowers at five. But now the evidence that we've seen is he can be there later on. He can be there if you go back. I'm fine with How going far back? back. I think you can go back until the Jets. I think Jets is a scary part. So okay, yeah, like five of, through nine. Okay, five through nine. Because there are a lot of yeah. stories that the Jets are going to move up to number nine. They're going to move up a pick to grab them. 
that the Jets want him. Like they're not even hiding it. Going, look, we're going for it this year. You know, the division is down. The Bills are down. The Patriots are down. Dolphins are down. That it's between basically, the, you know, the Jets and figure it out. I mean, they're Aaron Rodgers last year of this contract right here. So Brock Bowers is, you know, how far down are you, you going to play this game? I'll be honest with you. I'll be disappointed if they miss out on Brock Bowers if they're looking for a, a pass catching tight end for the fact he's the only guy like that. There are no comps to him in this draft. He is the guy, you know, he is the guy. And we already know they've signed two basically pass rushing tight ends, which is, is really frustrating. But th that's the, the way they're going. And pass rushing tight ends. Tie, uh, basically pass blocking tight ends okay. you know that they, they basically jumbo package guys which you can yeah, and we added a fullback with, with, yeah Super basically added a full <laughs> you stuck another offensive lineman over it's just again i'm not gonna i don't want to criticize too much because nothing has happened but i said i would sit there and give it space if this was tom telesco in the front office i'd be very disappointed of what i've seen so far but that it is what it is so brock bowers has always been my guy is, is what i've said okay um Last one on here is, I believe it's the last one on here. It's, um, oh, here we go. Two of them. Sorry. Walter football. We're going to go with, okay. They mm -hmm. have the Chargers keeping number five and taking Marvin Harrison Jr. So who's they picked believe, in, in front of Marvin Harrison Jr.? Malik neighbors. They have Malik neighbors going number four. Wow. To the Cardinals, the Cardinals taking that spot yep. and take him. That would be something. I, but I think it could happen. Malik neighbors is so good. People just write off Malik Neighbors because Marvin Harrison Jr. is just penciled in as number one for most people. It could happen, Mario. Listen, we get Marvin Harrison Jr. That's my wet dream. That's it. That's the don't wake me up. You know what I'm saying? Like That's the kind of moment I think with Marvin Harrison Jr. I'd be really shocked if that happens, if Malik Neighbors and Harrison go back to back because that means just what the Vikings trade offers where they just piss poor. <laughs> like did they, did they wet the bed staying in that kind of time frame? Like what the hell happened to them? I don't see that happening, to be honest with you. But like, if Marvin Come Harrison on. Jr. falls to us, dude, I mean, I'm, I'm having a wet dream, waking up and changing my pants. Look, if they pass on Marvin Harrison Jr., meaning the Cardinals, we're gonna say what everyone else is saying. That is so Arizona, right? That is so Cardinals yeah. football. I mean, if any organization would do that, it would be the Cardinals would do that. You know, for sure. It's like, this is why you've been what you've been since 1947. You're the Cardinals. This is what we I'm do. I'm starting to think that's the only way the Chargers stay in the number five pick is if Marvin Harrison Jr. somehow falls down to that. Then I think they actually stay with that pick. If he's not available, I could see them trading down. You know, I agree with you on that. I agree. I think he's yeah. the one guy that keeps you right there at number five. And uh, finally, um, not a fan. I rip him every single year because I beat him every single year, and this isn't my full-time job of doing mock drafts, but it is his full-time job. It's Mel Kuyper. Mo Kuyper has the Chargers trading with the Vikings, and it would be number 11, J.C. Latham, okay? At number 23, it's Xavier Worthy, wide receiver, Texas. Oh, man. See, I think you can get a better receiver than Xavier Worthy, and I think he's fine, but he's the really fast guy, right? Everybody's, yeah. you know, wants to see his speed. I think people take for granted too much how, how fast guys are, right? Who cares how fast you are? Can you catch the ball? Can you make plays? Yeah. Like, like Zach Wilson rolling out to his left, he can throw the ball 50 yards. Like, how many times are you going to do that in a game? Xavier Worthy's okay, but I think we can get a better player, Mario. There's better receivers, I think, than Xavier Worthy at that spot. A lot better. I, I'm com I'm complete with you. I would take Brian Thomas Jr. instead, uh, 10 times out of 10 over Worthy. Do I think he's going to be a good receiver? Yes, but I think right now the Chargers need draft throw a one receiver. I, I just, Xavier Worthy doesn't scream one to me, he screams two. And a really good two, but it's hard to be really good too when you have Quinn Johnston and Joshua Palmer in the same group as you. And then we're asking you to be a one, especially as a rookie. I think Brian Thompson Jr. is a better option. He can provide that kind of deep ball option, that speedy option that you kind of still want or need right now. I'd rather go that route than the worthy. And um, do me a favor, last good Texas wide receiver, go. <laughs> that's fair you know here's the deal Xavier Worthy is going to end up on the Chiefs and he's going to look like a stud that's what's going to happen right Xavier Worthy has Chiefs written all over him they're going to think he's the next version of Tyreek Hill and he's going to have success because everybody has success in that offense I don't think Xavier Worthy is the the pick for the Chargers just my feeling I'm, I'm kind of with you guys and it kind of stinks that we put these guys and we do it in the, in the positive too 
we take these guys and depending what school they're from and saying what kind of success they're going to have. Like LSU wide receivers, are the guys going to be great? Unless your name is Buster Davis. We're going to sit there and say the guy's going to be great. But otherwise, LSU wide receivers, LSU cornerbacks, you know, we're always excited about those guys because that's what that school does. But at the same time, uh, I'm with you guys right here. Marvin Harrison Jr., I think, is a guy that at five – I know Brock Bauer seems a little ridiculous for a lot of people at five. I'm just worried about the Jets going, that's their guy. That's fine. Aaron Rodgers has never had a history of throwing to the tight end. Name the biggest tight end season for Aaron Rodgers. It doesn't happen very often. True. And he's only going to be there for yeah. one year. So you can get Brock Bowers. That's cool. Who's going to throw him the ball after this next season when yeah. Aaron Rodgers retires? I don't yeah. think there's an answer there. Yeah, guys joining us right now. It's Bubba Franks wants to talk about that topic right now. Bubba, oh, he's not there. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding, right? Yeah, you're True. absolutely right. Aaron Rodgers doesn't use the tight end. He and like also if I'm Brock Bowers, like you kind of mentioned it. That's like the last place I want to be where I'd go there one year, probably won't get the ball very much. And then by the time I'm like ready to go and like what my second or third year, I'm a pretty good player. Yeah, my quarterback's gone. And then we're we're stuck doing the the rental, the bridge QB for probably the next decade on the Jets because they really jet it up, and uh, and then you're just sitting there going, "Nice, this is my career," and I'm in New York where if I drop one pass, everyone in New York media screams at me, calls me a loser, part those tomatoes at my parents. So this sucks. So if I was Brock Bowers, I don't want to go to New York at all. Plus, your coach is probably fired in a year, right? Yeah, for sure. Roberts, what are those? The came Robert out the Robert Sala. Sala. And the owner got into it at the coaches' meetings. That's awesome. It's like when your friend starts arguing with their parents at, at a PTA meeting. You're like, what is going on over there? So weird, but it's so Jets at the same time. If Brock Bowers falls to the Jets, I'm not going to be heartbroken. But if he falls to a team like the Chiefs, I will be heartbroken. You know, it's funny you say oh, that. God. You don't hear that story very often, right, of coaches getting to it with owners. I mean, it's... It's taboo. It's the end of your career, especially, in, you know, Bill Belichick could say whatever he wants, basically the Robert Kraft, but you've never heard stories. Like, who do you think you are getting into it with an owner? You don't think these owners have tremendous egos with their billions of dollars with a pile of resumes on their desk for the next head coach? Are you out of your mind? You haven't done anything. You know, if you're if you're part of the Johnson family, you're like, dude, beat it. What, what, what's wrong with you? Here's a Band-Aid. Bye. It, insane. Yeah. It, Bubba Frank says he's here. Let's chat. <laughs> Dude, how do they do I hope that's his, I know I was about to say, I hope it's the same guy that did um has to be who, what names did he come up? He said he was Joey Bosa's mom or something. Like I hope it's the same guy because that guy's talented. <laughs> <laughs> guy's a beast. That's funny, man. That was good. No, that, that was good. Got a got a good laugh out of us right there. So uh, anyway, that that was those are the ones that were on the table as far as just looking around. I, I again, I love the mock drafts and the way people are thinking. Some of them always seem a little bit crazy. You know, the Nick Wright one where he says the the Chargers make two trades with the Vikings and then with the Falcons. Look, the the Falcons. It's it sounds like that is one of the picks I'm like pretty sure of. Like there are three picks that I'm really sure of in this draft. And Caleb Williams is one, and and Joe Alt going to the Titans is another, and Dallas Turner going to the Falcons is my third. Like, if I had to bet three guys to hit in the top ten, those are the three that I think hit in the top ten. Do you think drafting a guy that's from that area matters? Like, Brock Bowers is from Napa. You know, it's not L.A., but he's from California. Does that matter at all yeah. to you, or do you just want the best player? I know we brought up a couple weeks ago um, getting a guy that's teammates with somebody – just so they can feel more comfortable. Like Dallas Turner going to Atlanta when he's from that area, doesn't that make sense? Like, I think that would make more sense to have the guy feel comfortable. I think it's a distraction, Mario. What do you think? I, the reason I say distractions, everybody wants your time, wants tickets, wants money. Uh, like, not, I think it's one, it's great PR. Holy hell, that's great PR. Like, it's good marketing and everything. Um, when like a star comes home or anything like that. I think it's good for the athletes, especially if they're, you know, not a little bit on the younger side, like 21, 22 years old. Like, this is the first time I've ever really been on their own, right? And having them being close to family, being close to friends that grew up with, I think that can be really good just for them to kind of enter into this NFL professional athlete world where they can handle a little bit better because they have a little bit more support behind them, whether it's, or, you know, vice versa, where it's like, oh, I'm from California, I'm moving to New England. And I'm about to get thrown into like this whole different atmosphere 
playing in an organization, an area I'm not really familiar with, around people I don't really know, do I know if I can trust? I think all that stuff is a lot harder to do. So, yeah, I think an athlete going, yeah, I'm from Indianapolis and I got drafted by the Colts, I think that's a little bit better of an environment for them to grow and maybe makes them more comfortable in the transition to NFL is a little bit more better. See, Dallas Turner is not from Atlanta. He's from Florida. But I'm saying keeping him in the South, for example, it doesn't have to be the exact city. I think that matters. You know, when Buster mm-hmm. Davis comes to San Diego from Baton Rouge, like he doesn't know anybody. I'm not making an excuse for Buster Davis, but I think it would matter. Like, as from a human being perspective, I want to be somewhere where I'm comfortable. Yeah. So I don't know. That's it, just how it, I feel about it. I understand. It's funny. So uh, we, we have people on the chat who are upset we aren't in, in, engaging in the chat. We will engage in the chat, I promise you, as part of why we do this live show. But there are things we want to touch on, and then we'll throw the topics out and get to everything you're saying. So we see you there. Okay, just want to let people know. Um, someone made a comment, by the way, in the chat saying they don't believe the Chargers or the Rams will be in Los Angeles in five years. Couldn't disagree with you more. Number one, you have a $6 billion stadium. Two is it's been a tremendous success. You can't look at what the stadium's doing fan-wise, meaning who's wearing what color jersey or T-shirt or sweatshirt in the stands. It is all about filling the seats. And number one, filling the seats isn't even that important when you look at television viewers. The fact you have the number two media market has already been a tremendous success for the city of Los Angeles. Chargers are doing fine with the young young fan base. Rams are doing fine with the older fan base. Again, they've already hosted a Super Bowl. Another Super Bowl is on its way. It's a, a perfect place to, to host professional events. SoFi Stadium is the best stadium in the world. Uh, the NFL, don't think you're going to outsmart the NFL. The NFL's on top of everything, and that's that's the way it's going. The NFL announced that they'll be playing a game in South America uh, coming up between the Chiefs and uh, the Green Bay Packers. So the NFL continues to grow. I mean, we talked about the NFL and, and where it's at even on Christmas Day where they told the NBA that used to be your best day of the year. Not anymore. We're going to start doing that too. It doesn't matter that Christmas Day falls on a Wednesday. Guess what? We're playing a Wednesday game. I mean, like – Forget about resting your body and everything else. It's all about the dollars. Those TV dollars are, are what makes it count. And there's a reason why these NFL owners get a check for about $400 million each before the season even begins. Those aren't ticket sales. Those aren't jersey sales. Those are TV dollars. And because of those advertisers, NFL owners, it's a great business if you can own an NFL team. So the idea that the NFL is not successful in Los Angeles, you couldn't be further from the truth. The NFL knows what they're doing. They don't need any stadiums. They just need yep. a football field and cameras. It's Packers versus Eagles in Brazil. Um, is that right? Robert, I'm not. Well, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm not going to Brazil. Roberto Castillon says, hey, guys, love the show. I owe Mario and apologizing for cr- criticizing Cadoba. Can you please tell us a story on why you guys were kicked out of SoFi? I didn't know we were kicked out of SoFi. Bolt up and get ready to trade down and select a tackle, by the way. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, not kicked out of SoFi, just not allowed into SoFi. You can't get kicked out of somewhere <laughs> if you're never allowed in. <laughs> There's a difference there. Um, I think a reason why we haven't been invited to SoFi or have media credentials to SoFi yet is because we are a little bit harsh on the team, to be honest with you. Somebody contacted Dave once upon a time and said, you guys are a little rough on the team. Why don't you take it easy? No, yep. uh, we're not going to do that because that wouldn't be fair to the people that watch this show and to ourselves. We want to be honest and tell you how we see it. And I hope hopefully you guys appreciate that. Yeah. Look, Mario, I know you're gonna answer in a second, but it, it, here here's I'll just say my part real fast. I covered that team for almost 30 years for ESPN. All right. I was the ESPN guy for 30 years covering the Chargers, including when they were in Los Angeles. When when the pandemic hit and ESPN wasn't going to send those reporters out anymore, that that was absolutely fine. The issue is we aren't shills. We aren't going to sit there and we don't get paid by the team. We're going to tell you exactly what we feel. Our opinion is why we do the show. We're three guys that are rooting for the same team you're rooting for. If we lied to you all the time, number one, I don't think you'd be here. Two is I, I don't I don't think at the same time that we'd want to do this show if we just felt like we were lying every single time we're doing the show because we're about Dean Spanos and his family and, and what they think. If we did that show that way, we wouldn't have the Jim Harbaugh story. Uh, we might get a Christmas card from John Spanos, but who cares? Nobody cares about that stuff. But right now, Cheryl Bosa hates my guts. The Chargers uh, front office aren't, isn't in fans either. And at the same time, when I asked for a credential to go to the Dolphins Chargers game a few years ago, their response was, hey, good luck with getting that credential. And I was like, well, you're the one that decides if I'm getting it. And there was zero response. So it doesn't matter. I, I, I don't need a credential to the game. I've done it for too long. 
And for where I live, it's a two-hour drive in, two-hour drive back, and I'm fine watching every single NFL game, including the Chargers, every single week. So we're good. We're, not, we're all good. If I want to go as a yep. fan, we got a bunch of friends who have season tickets, and we can go as a fan. And we still get insider info, so doesn't really exactly right. <laughs> doesn't really matter. We, get we actually so. get better stuff because because people will leak it to us. Anytime anyone gets info on anything, it's because they want it to be leaked. So when we get yep. info from people inside the building, people that work for the organization, we're happy to share it here without you know giving up our source. I would challenge uh, John Spanos to a wrestling match, and then that determines if we get media credentials for the rest of our lives, even if we're like eighty He's years five old. Two. Yeah, he's five two. I got him. <laughs> like our chances. I got five two one twenty. Can you take him? Yeah. Yeah. Got another comment oh, here from. Sorry, Mario. Got another no, comment no. here from Vix. It says, "Do you guys have any plans on where you're going to watch the NFL draft? Right here. We're going to do a live show right here. Uh, we're going to watch the draft. The Chargers trade down a five. We're going to keep rolling, and we're just going to keep talking Ooh. through the picks because I think that that's more fun." Dave made an announcement at the beginning of the show. It might not be here. We might be changing um, our name, might be going somewhere else. You can see on the bottom of the screen here, our Twitter handles. Look there to see where we're going to be next because it might not be here. Okay. Could be a whole different yeah. name, a whole different deal. We're going to need new, probably new subscribers and likes and all that other stuff to building the show. But we're still doing the Charger show. The three of us will still be here doing a Charger show. It just might be a different name. So please pay attention through the, the next few days, weeks, whatever. But as Josh said, we're really looking forward to the draft day show. I got another comment here from Eddie Ramirez. I'm going to start with Mario. Curious to know how long after the expiration date do you guys pl do you guys eat something or drink milk? Mm. Mm. Eddie Ramirez always coming up with something hot. Uh one this is a great question. We had this argument in our house a couple weeks ago. I love this question. Go ahead, Mark. Really? All right. Yeah, we did. Uh well, one lactose intolerant, so out on the milk, no milk. So that's a tough one. But for like meat or anything, you gotta give it a good check and good sniff. I usually do like a day or two, day or two, and then I'll eat. If it's good, and it depends where it's from. If it's from a little shaky spot and you do a little sniff sniff and it's like, whoa, whoa, buddy, this thing's already dead. I think it's horse, not meat. So uh, if it's anything like that, buddy, you got to toss that out quick. But other than that, I give it a day or two and season that boy up, cook it right, cook it well, and uh, medium rare. If you're not medium rare, then get out of my face. Mar I mean, Josh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm with Mario. Day or two. Um, yeah, I don't go further than that. We had this conversation, Dave and I did, because my grandmother, I hope she doesn't watch this, she doesn't, she tried to give me creamer that was three months old. I'm like, no, I'm not going to drink that. Oh. Yeah, and she goes, she goes, oh, they just slap that number on there just because they have to. I go, no, they put the number on there because that's when you're going to get sick. So I'm not going to drink creamer that's three months old. And then she called me the P word. And I was like, aren't you my grandmother? Why would you call me that? And it was really... I hated it. It was nothing good came out of that situation, but uh, a day or two is my answer. There you go. I tell you what, I'm I'm that date guy. Like even that date makes me a little nervous as I'm eating. That I'm, literally, it's worth throwing out not to get sick. I'm paranoid uh, as hell. Do you guys ever have like the pantries as a kid, where like you go to their house and you had to be really careful? You had gotten the pantry because if you didn't check the expiration date, it'd be like dinosaur times. Yeah, we Josh and I had that same conversation because we all know people like that. That you'll see stuff the years don't even match oh. up. Yeah, and like that, this mayonnaise is twenty nineteen on it. What's the hell? What the hell's going on? You're making tuna with it. We we that was a big problem in my family. It's why parents wouldn't throw stuff away. So we'd have granola bars from like two thousand twelve to be fourteen. <laughs> and he always we call him a rookie if they haven't been to our house before. And like you know. Maybe, you know, snuck a little something, something. And, you know, you had some fun when you're like 15, 16. You walked upstairs because you're pretty hungry and seeing the rookie mistake of someone grabbing the granola bars. It's like, all right, well, everything's coming out of your system tonight. So at least you're going to be cleared up for tomorrow. It's always fun. Shout out, Lisa. <laughs> Shout out, Lisa. I got another comment here from Gilbert Damien Zendejas. He says, Can you guys name the last Alabama successful NFL quarterback, Jalen Hurts and Tua? What's your next question? Mm, uh, Ken, don't, don't do Ken that. Yeah, yeah, Ken Stabler, Bart Starr. I mean, what, what are you talking about? He said the about? last successful. I know, like, but I mean, it makes it sound like yeah. there was never one. Yeah. There have been Alabama successful quarterbacks. Yeah, you said Joe Namath? Yeah, yeah Joe Namath? Yeah. Come on. You're better uh, than that. 
Don't can we also that. can we also recognize Josh? That was an excellent pronunciation of the name. I mean, I'm from wow. San Diego. Yeah, fair. I mean, fair. Yeah, I, mean, I got an upper hand on that one. Yeah, dude, my high school was like 75 percent Mexican. Like, I all my friends have a Spanish last name, so I'm good there. Um, I can't speak Spanish though; it's actually embarrassing. Um, <laughs> A lot of people are very nice saying we're the best Chargers podcast. Somebody said, why weren't you invited in the Chargers facility like the rest of what the podcast on Monday? <laughs> yeah, why do you think, yeah, why do you think do we you just think? gave an answer? Yeah. I tell you what, it made me Mario on that one, but yeah. it makes me feel kind of good that we weren't. Like, you know what I mean? It kind of like, don't well, bad bring boys. us in. Yeah, I, I'm fine with being the bad guy. 100%. Yeah. If it means we do a better show and we're honest with the audience, I'm 100% fine with that. I'm okay not eating, uh, you know, their free cookies and, you know, and, and orange juice and everything else they're offering and telling us, hey, we really appreciate the coverage because I know they don't. So it would have been an uncomfortable situation anyway. Now, at the same time, 100 percent, I would have gone just to make them uncomfortable. You know, they wouldn't want me there either, but I would have gone because guess what? You just made a mistake. You just invited the bear into the into the room and that's fine. You can stare at me all you want. And go, what the hell that you think they're going to say afterwards? We aren't here to rip the organization. Just do the right thing. Have success. When you win five games a year and you're paying a guy $40 million almost that, that gets six sacks a year or hardly plays, we're going to call you out on it. We also, guess what, propped you up when you hired Jim Harbaugh and, and told your son to sit in the corner until Jim is done. That's the way it goes. I, I think that's fair as can be. I don't understand when we aren't lying to the audience. I'm sorry. We are not Charger employees. It's the way it is. And I know they listen to the stupid show because they told us they listen to the show. We've heard it from the front office. People that work in that office have told us they listen to the show. Why do you think they're upset? They just forgot about us? No, they didn't. Yeah. AK says, Josh, I have a question, please. Most excited uh, game for you this year at home. Yeah, for me, it's definitely it, – this is the same game every year because I think once you beat this team, you're a real competitor. It's the Chiefs. You got to beat the Chiefs at home. You can't go 0 and 2 against the Chiefs every year. You got to split. You're probably not going to do it in Arrowhead. Nobody really has that chance. You got to do it at home. You got to beat the Chiefs. You can't get to the top of the mountain without knocking off the Chiefs. So the game I'm most excited for at home is the Chiefs. I'll throw out the other home games. Obviously, you got the Broncos and the Raiders. You got the Ravens, the Bengals, Saints, Bucks, and Titans. What about you guys? Uh, I'm kind of with you, Simpatico, and the Chiefs, because if you beat the Chiefs and whatever that you know week it lines up in or whatever, as soon as you beat that Chiefs, they mentioned it. It one watch out for those gambling lines to change the next day on the Chiefs on the Chargers winning division, and two, I think it's the welcoming to the NFL. Oh yeah, here we are. You know, it's like all right, like the Chiefs are no longer our dad that you know keeps us on a leash when we go to Disney World. Okay, like we're that, that's not who they are anymore. We're on their level now. We're not just a little brother anymore kicking rocks. I think that'd be huge for the Chargers. The other game, though, I'm just super, super pumped for just because like the storylines and I kind of I'm excited for a very aggressive post game handshake. And that's between the Ravens, Chargers and the Ravens. Jim and John, like they're going to like do the handshake and then they're like grab each other's arm and like work for leverage. Like it's going to turn into a wrestling match on the 50 yard line. Because they're each going for a takedown, just a little bit more dominance for the game. I'm I'm pretty pumped for that one, and I'm pumped for the Chargers to come up to the top. Hopefully, they come out on top of that one. The game right now, I hate to say it, it, it is the Chiefs. I hate the fact that the Chiefs are so relevant. I mean, the Chiefs used to be a joke. I mean, forever when they had crappy quarterbacks and they had those goofy face masks. If you look back in the day before you guys were even born, the Chiefs used to wear a different face mask than everybody else. It was bizarre, and then uh, never a Chiefs fan. Uh, I hate the fact that they're good, but Here's here's my chief story, man. While I'm not well, I'm not a fan, it took them forever to recognize this guy. This is something you guys have to look up. They had a running back that was outstanding in the early '80s. His name was Joe Delaney. Okay, and Joe was like honestly top two running backs in the NFL. And there was a summer where Joe Delaney saw two kids drowning, and he jumps in to save the kids, and he doesn't know how to swim. He saves one kid, and Joe and another kid die. They drown. Okay. Dude, there was no acknowledgement of Joe Delaney by anybody. It was like, what the hell? Now they they put a statue up in the last few years, but I'm like, what the hell? I mean, talk about your NFL man of the year. Here's a young guy in his prime that didn't hesitate to jump in and save two kids, but everyone's going to act like that wasn't a hero act. 
as I thought the Chiefs are shallow as can be. Never been a Chiefs fan. I always thought that was kind of ridiculous how the Chiefs handled that whole deal. So not a fan all the way back all these years. You find out that the owner is a punk. You know, these stories keep coming out, you know, as they try to get a brand new stadium. Then you find out he's like the biggest jerk and, and cheap ass in the world. And you're going, well, I'm not a fan of him either. So, no, I hate the fact they beat the Chargers. I'm with Josh. The scale will change when the Chargers beat the Chiefs. And then what are our chances of hosting a playoff game? Because that's what you have to do to win, uh, to get a playoff game. You have to win your division. So can we get by the Chiefs and move forward? That's why I really don't want to see the Chiefs trade up and get Brock Bowers because when Kelsey retires, I think that's their time. But if Brock Bowers steps in, I'm like, God dang it, they got another Kelsey. If the Bengals get uh, Brock Bowers, that frustrates me. So I can always look at that pick of, hey, we might not have gotten him, but who's he going to that hurts the Chargers in the future because nobody can cover that damn tight end. So the Chiefs game is is the game. Most Charger fans will say Raiders because it's that that rivalry, but the Raiders aren't who you're chasing. You're chasing the Chiefs. Right now, the Chiefs are the most important game on that schedule. 100%. It's going to continue to be the Chiefs. I, this question to me is pretty interesting because I want to hear what you have to say. It comes from GTO. It says, Dave, do you have inside info? Colin Coward said today the Chargers, he thinks the Chargers can get Bowers at 12. That got me going. Well, I know the answer to the first question. I know I know you have inside info. I know you're not going to drop names right now, but yeah. you knew Jim Harbaugh was going to come to the Chargers weeks before it was announced. And then do you think Colin Coward actually knows about that? Do you think he has the inside info to say the Chargers are going to get Brock Bowers at 12? I don't know. I don't know Colin's uh, relation. I used to have a very good relationship with Colin. I used to, I used to go on his show all the time. He used to come on my show all the time. Every Friday, Colin would come on to my show from his house, smoking a cigar, drinking a whiskey, and, and he would come on in the afternoon, and he was, he was great. And then uh, this is while he was still at ESPN. Colin was, was very good. Tom, Colin, I know, has certain relationships. His, one of his closest is with Tom Telesco, who's no longer the GM of the Chargers. So I'm not sure what his relationship is with this Chargers front office. You know, we, we can get an idea who he's he's close to from his information. I have no idea who he's talking to at this point. Um, it, it, no, I, I all I know is the inside information that I have right now is the Chargers are trading out of that five spot. But I agree with what Josh said at the beginning of the show, that if Marvin Harrison is there, that Marvin Harrison Jr. is the guy that would be the one that breaks all those plants. That if number five, Marvin Harrison Jr. is there. But we've heard from very reliable sources that the Chargers are definitely trading this pick. Uh, 12 spot two, just real quickly, that'd be the Broncos. So <laughs> they're at 12. That means you have to do the deal with the devil. And, uh, you know, just saying that's highly hard to do. It will Bowers be around at 12. I think so. But I think that's thinking okay. kind of bizarre. Let me, let me throw this one at you since you said that Mario. Okay. Cause a lot of people yeah. say Patrick Sertan junior is untouchable. But with the Broncos say, whoever we want at five, is that important to us that we're willing to go up to five and we're going to give you our 12 and Patrick Sertan Jr.? Yeah, I mean, if you, you definitely do that. Patrick Sertan Jr. is a top three corner in the NFL and you get the 12th pick? 100%. What do you think, Mario? I'm looking up his contract right now, but I, yeah, I think you have to jump on that. So you, you then that means you can take a like literally take care of three positions in two days, O line, receiver, corner. And the yeah. corner's proven. It's not even like that big of a risk. Like the corner's proven, so you don't have to worry about that. I would take that one hundred ten percent. Asante Samuel Jr. is a two. I mean, good player. He's a two. He's not a one. Um, don't try to make him to be a one because he's not. He's a very good two. I think that'd be a huge get for the Chargers. Do you guys feel any way? about the Chargers trading with the Raiders or the Broncos? Do you have a preference? I know they have, don't have the same pick, obviously, but just out of your hatred for those two franchises, would you want to trade with one over the other? I would trade with anybody. I don't care who you are in its other division. I know that used to be taboo. I think the Raiders and Broncos are right now are so far behind the Chargers and Chiefs because they don't have a franchise quarterback. And I understand by making that trade, you might be giving them a franchise quarterback. He's not proven. He's not Herbert. He's not Mahomes. I would trade with anyone that makes me better. Yeah. I'm with know. you. I, I think you trade with anybody. If the haul is worth it, you do it. This is kind of a loaded question. If you trade with a team like the Raiders or the Broncos, are you determining not just what you get in return from that trade, but who they're probably going to pick? Like, let's say you had a really yeah. high grade on Michael Penix, and you're like, if they take Michael Penix, I don't want them to have Michael Penix. Do you consider that part of the trade, or do you just look at what you're going to get in return? 
Good I word. would look at that part of the trade because like that's because then it's going. Are we going to allow? Are we really going to allow another top tier QB in our division? Like we already had to go up against Mahomes. We've kind of had the benefit so far. We have taken advantage of it, but of having one Russell Wilson, who's just not a good quarterback in our division, and then we had. What, we're going to have Gardner Minshew this year, then mixed with that was Jimmy G, Aiden O'Connell, and Derek Carr. Like, we've had the blessing of not having to worry about the other two QBs. I think you have to take in consideration that if the Raiders or the Broncos call us and want to move up, like, that's the thing that scares me. And look, I'm fine with doing a deal with them, but I think if you're going to do that, then go, hey, if they want Panix Jr. that bad, we got to make sure we're wiping out assets so that they can't be successful with him. We got to make sure that it's going to be like the Carolina Panthers level where they have Bryce Young. Talented quarterback. Can't be really good, but he has so little talent around him, Dave. That's impossible for him to look good, especially in year one. His confidence is gone. Dumbest trade of the last couple of years was getting a quarterback and then taking away his option. What are you doing? Yeah. Why would you get rid of DJ Moore? It makes no sense. Who's he going to throw the ball to? The Carolina Panthers are the worst run organization in professional sports. Horrible, man. With the worst owner. With the worst the guy's owner. a psychopath. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Sinclair. By the way, real quick, by the way. Trade with Denver and takes her 10. I agree. Sorry, what are yeah. you saying? No, Charlie, thank you very much for that. Charlie's Charlie's pretty smart. Um, is is uh, when, when you look at the Raiders, I think the only way the Raiders would move up to number five guys if for some reason Jaden Daniels was there. That's the guy they want. Right. We, we've all heard the connections. You know, of course, he was recruited to Arizona State by the Raiders head coach, the whole deal. But the, with uh, the, giving a team a franchise quarterback, yeah, Mario, that's that's a big deal. I mean, that's a big deal of, of saying, you know, what does that do for a franchise and making them better? I, I, I don't think the Raiders make a trade. I think the Raiders are going to stay exactly where they're at. They have a ton of holes, and I think they're going to do their whole Garden Minshew deal this year, unless. Tom Brady comes out of retirement because that was a giant story today that Tom Brady said he would come out of retirement and the Raiders are the, one of the teams on his list. He mentioned Patriots too. He's not going to the Patriots. It's the Raiders, right? Now he has to look into it because of course he's one of the owners of the Raiders and the, the Las Vegas aces. But Tom Brady said, he goes, I'm in great shape. I'm always going to be in great shape. My arm's never going to go anywhere. My arm's going to be fine. And uh, who knows? Do you think Tom Brady at age, whatever, 47 comes out of retirement? No. No. He, I don't think he comes out of retirement unless he has like one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. And that, they definitely don't. So I, I don't think he does that. Do you think, Mario? Like either the situation has to be perfect. Like I, I don't know, Isaiah Francis put like a crazy hypothetical in there, but it would literally have to be like the Niners call. And they'd be like, hey, Purdy's out. We got we gotta win two more games. And he's like, Yeah, I'll take number eight. And throw it on there. That would look pretty. Like, I think it had to be like one of those. Or like, it's somehow Patriots on the AFC Championship. And Mahomes goes down and Reed goes, hey, we need we need to beat the Pats. He goes, I'd love to. Now, he's you supposed know? to be, a, obviously, the number one guy for Fox this year, right? Tom Brady's going into the booth. That's I the forgot plan. about that. Yep. He's supposed to be the number one guy. At the same time, just because, you know, we, we love football and we love the storylines. I, I kind of would dig it if Tom Brady did try and make a return. And, and the big thing in my head, look, I've I've never been you know divorced, been married to the same person for over thirty years, but I kind of like the fact that he would come back to the NFL now that his wife's with the kickboxing instructor, whatever the hell that guy is, and starts pulling again. Like I'd root for Tom just for the man card. Doesn't he own part of the Raiders? Yeah, he does. Yeah. So it's He'd the Michael Jordan out. situation where Michael yeah, Jordan played for like the thing. Wizards. Yeah, exactly. Uh, quick thing too. I think Brady's going to be terrible in the booth. I think he's going to be god too. awful. Yeah, I'm with okay. you. Joe Montana was terrible. I think Tom Brady's going to be terrible too. And he can't Tom be worse Brady, than J Jason Witten. No, but Tom Jason Witten was bad. He was. Tom Brady cusses more than me. I'm like, there's no way he's going to make it through a game. He cusses like a sailor. No. But you do this show and you don't cuss. Dude, a lot of times I catch myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this. I think the worst people, the the worst mounts I've ever heard on most people in this world have all been people that have worked in radio. Like they're good, but as soon as the mics go off and we're in break, I mean, talk about bleep after bleep. It's like hearing a rap song on the radio. Like it is. It's like, gosh, dude, you really have. 
hold that together. Dude, I, I got a story <laughs> for you. So I'm a diehard Laker fan. So is Dave. And uh, Dave has a friend, Alan Horton, who's the radio guy for the Wolves. And he invited me to go to uh, the Laker game. And we're, I was courtside. It was awesome for Lakers-Wolves. And I have my head down and I'm looking at my phone or I'm doing something. And I'm, I can't say the guy's name on this. But he comes over to Alan Horton and he's an employee of the Lakers. And I'm like, dude, that's it. <laughs> That's him. He's an on-air you know, like, guy. On guy. Yeah, he's an on-air guy. Really popular. I'm like, that's cool. That's him. He's, he's right here. And Alan Horton goes, what do you think about the team this year? And he goes, well, if LeBron plays any MFing defense, we'll be all right. I was like, what? <laughs> that guy can cuss? It was just so weird, dude. Like hearing a guy on TV cuss. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right. So I have a, a question here from Isaiah Francis. It says, Hypothetically, if Mahomes was injured in the AFC Championship and the Chiefs signed Rivers to play in the Super Bowl, would y'all root for the Chiefs? Kind of like the uh, 2022 49er situation. Phillip Rivers is my favorite player ever. I love Phillip Rivers. I 100% would not root for him if he was on the Chiefs. I hate All right, Chiefs. hold on. I'm going to give you a match. I didn't fall okay? apart. Before you, guys, before you guys decide 100% on this, it's Phillip Rivers on the Chiefs against the Dallas Cowboys. Who are you rooting for? I hate the Chiefs. I'm rooting for Rivers. I think I'm rooting for Rivers. I can't root for the Chiefs. Can't happen. I root for the boys. I root what are you for really? the boys. Yeah. Yeah, I'd root for the boys. I don't have that much hatred towards the Cowboys that much because they've never been relevant in my lifetime. So I, I've, yeah. it's, it's always been a good That's joke. That's true. Yeah, your whole life. They haven't done anything. You're right. Yeah. Just oh Romo gosh. fumbling. Yeah. Uh, here's got another one from Bolt Up, baby. It says, there's no way the Chargers should help a division opponent get their quarterback, especially the Raiders. L.A. is cursed having Raider fans everywhere, uh, everywhere, everywhere. Dude, you got to look at what you're going to get in return. If the Raiders are willing, Raiders or Broncos are willing to give you the moon for that pick, you got to consider it. And you have to think with the quarterback the Chargers have in Justin Herbert, you're already ahead of them. Neither team has a quarterback. So you already have a head start, and if you're going to get a lot in return for the holes that we have, why not consider that? You have to consider all these trades. Especially, too, like, to imagine if they offered that and it was for, like, because in this situation, it's going to be JJ, right? It's not going to be Drake. It's going to be JJ, more than likely. If they go all in like that, Dave, for JJ, you can't tell me, like, Joe and Jim aren't, like, laughing a little bit going, they really want JJ. They really yeah, they want JJ. For it. They fell yeah. for the hype. Sounds good, man. We'll take it. Let me hang up really quickly. <laughs> and you laugh your ass off. <laughs> and you go, oh, I can't believe that just happened. That is too funny. That's too funny. Yeah, I, I still think this JJ thing is is one of those moves. Like, this is one of those things I'm really curious to watch. Is he the guy or is he the hype guy? I think he's the hype guy. And, he's the hype and if guy. he's the if he's yeah. if he's great, fine. But man, right now I just think he's he's the hype guy, and I think Jim's pushing him not only because it looks good. He was a Michigan guy, and he recruited him, but it's also one less guy to worry about in the way as you're picking up five, and it's kind of like you're picking up four. You know what I mean? If somebody takes JJ McCarthy in the top three, key thing to remember on him too. Sorry to cut you off, Josh. No problem. The, you're good. Like, remember a year ago, like he was battling for his QB spot. Like, there was a general, like, him and Mecca, no more, I you say his name. I, God, my pronunciation gets better every week. But, like, they were battling, like, through most of the year about who's going to take that spot. And then now you want this guy to be your starting quarterback. And, like, who, where'd that other guy go? To Iowa, sucked. Now he's probably in the transfer portal for, like, the 15,000th time trying to get a deal at Lowe's for NIL. Like, who, you know, it's not like Mac Jones could be with someone. So, just something to keep in mind with good old JJ. I think age is the name of the... Uh, account makes a great point he goes get jj in our division harbaugh will know how to beat him what does that say about mm -hmm. jj mccarthy if his college quarterback is willing to trade with you to have him in his division good that point. just says everything you need to know i mean why would you not why would you make that trade for jj mccarthy i think he is the fall guy where he's going to you know fall not like uh show his translator but i think he's the fall guy where he's going to fall <laughs> in the in the draft uh, the, the thing i'm looking at is daniels and may which one's going to go number two Everybody's pointing Everything towards today, May, but May. a couple yeah. of weeks ago was Daniel. So I have no idea who's going to go number two. And Daniel's butchered his interview with uh, the Patriots. We were talking about it before the show, and we're like, "Was this on purpose? Did he butcher? Did he butcher the interview with the Patriots on purpose?" 
Yeah, big thing I was uh, hearing today was all that <laughs> Jaden botched interviews. And his agent was like, you're going to go do that again. <laughs> it's kind of like, I remember like when I, I failed a test in like second grade, my mom like called the teacher and I like get on the phone and apologize. And then I had to retake the test. I did good. So what I thought of, he's just in trouble. Like, I'm not going to say God is spanking. Moving on. But well, hold um, on. what about if you're the Patriots, aren't you going first impression, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, first impressions, everything. The fact that, you know, this guy can be a doper or not give a hundred percent. You don't want a guy that's never going to give a hundred percent. And yeah. what do you say? Like too, like he might like that second contract. Let's say he does great. That second contract is he going to do it to Sean Watson? Like, is he going to ask out? And then you have to force a trade to Las Vegas. If that, you know, possible, but just think it down the line. Like if he's not committed day one. He's not going to be committed in three years. Especially with what you have, dude. There are certain organizations, honestly, I would not want to play for, and the Patriots are one of them. I mean, it, it, first of all, going to a Patriots game is not easy. I understand players and owners get out and into the stadium a different way. I got it. It's still, it, it's nowhere close to anything, you know, enjoyable. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a good forty-five minute drive in and out. The weather is is brutal. Then the way the stadium is built with that big wide opening, as you're going towards one end zone or going away from it. The wind completely affects your passes. There's no way I'd want to go to the Patriots. And the Patriots have so many holes on their roster, that's not a franchise I'd want to go to. First-year head coach, I would not want to go there. Who do you think the Patriots draft? I think they go May. I think May's their guy. So you think Daniels think goes to Washington? I think Daniels goes to Washington. Hmm. Same here. What if May goes to Washington? Does the Patriots take Jaden Daniels? They take Penix, take McCarthy. What Wouldn't surprise me if they if they if they trade it out. Wouldn't surprise me if huh. they trade it out. Interesting. I, yeah. I mean, that could so, be a great trade. Could you imagine if they trade out though, and they get like Bo Nix or Penix, and like they end up being really good? They look like a okay. genius. Okay, you brought up Bo Nix. And, and, you know, how Bo Nix feels like that guy that's been in college forever, you know. But yeah. there's so much, you know, forget about Bo Nix. No one talks about Bo Nix. I mean, you'd think if there was a rumor of a quarterback that could go top 10 because of how he played in college and all the experience he has of playing in the most college football games of all time. I think Philip Rivers held that record before him. You you sit there and you go, what has happened to Bo Nix? Like, all of a sudden, is he Paxton Lynch? Because Bo Nix has fallen off the face of the earth. Bo Nix is not that great. And I could be eating my words, but Bo Nix's comments the other day makes me think he has to go to a small market. I don't know if you guys saw what he said the other day. It was that fans at Auburn care about football too much. And in Eugene, Oregon, it's just fun. Everybody has good vibes. It's like, well, dude, good luck going to like the they're Patriots. High. Yeah. Everyone yeah, in they're high. high. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But good luck going to like the Patriots or a big city where they're like, very serious you know yeah, you want to go to the serious. tennessee titans and just chill like good for you but you can't go to a big city and expect people not to be on your ass you're in the nfl man people care <laughs> yeah and you know you go to i think that also screams to like if i'm the patriots if i'm you know i already throw denver broncos in there like that's something you gotta worry about like Mitch Trubisky, I'm just going to use a perfect example. Like North Carolina didn't really get a lot of media attention, didn't really get a lot of cr criticism. Go to a big city in Chicago, you throw that first pick, baby. That's getting talked about Monday through Friday. A lot of people breaking that down, a lot of people ripping him. And if he couldn't handle that at Auburn, and then he goes to Oregon. And also, like, Josh, I want to ask you this too. Like, was Bo Nix that good in college, or did he just see legitimately every college defense in America so many times where it's like, hey, I already know the answers to this test. You know what I'm I saying? Mean, like he was, yeah, he's been yeah. he's older. He's older. He's been in college for a long time. He's, I think, he was like a four year starter in high school, right? His dad's a popular football player, so he grew up as a huge football guy. Starts all the way through high school, has one of the best high school careers in Alabama. Goes to Auburn. He's a starter as a freshman. Transfers to Oregon, who everybody right. plays well but at he Oregon. He graduated from Auburn. It shows you how long he was at Auburn. He graduated from there. Yeah, we graduated the same class, <laughs> me and Bo Nix. But everybody <laughs> that goes to Oregon does well. It's hard to judge people that play quarterback at Oregon. Like Marcus Mariota, a top three quarterback I've ever seen in college. He's very, very average to below average in the NFL. It's hard to judge guys that play quarterback at Oregon. I Kelly think Bo Nix goes to Denver. Like To me, it makes the most sense. 
Um, but I don't think Bo Nix is that great. I, I would take Bo Nix over JJ McCarthy though, because I really don't think JJ McCarthy is that good. I'd rather take that risk. Yes, I would rather take that risk. Yeah, interesting to see. By the way, some of the comments that on the side of the screen, the, some of the questions that are being asked are ones that we answered earlier in the show, especially if people asking about were we invited to the Charger uh, podcast group to the facility, all that stuff. We go back and <laughs> watch the show, watch the show. We already spoke about it, uh, but but again, as as uh, we get ready for this draft, guys, and we move forward. In case you're just tuning in now, you didn't see the beginning of the show. Uh, again, the, the Bolt City podcast, a lot of fun. We're going to continue doing it. All of us are going to continue talking Charger football with you. The only thing is it might have a different name. So to find out what the name is and where to find us, you might have to follow us through social media to figure that out. Okay, So uh, as you see, our, our Twitter handle is going on the bottom of the screen. Uh, follow us on Twitter, and we will keep you up to date of everything that's going on. But um, again, we will talk Charger football with you uh, as we've been doing at least twice a week during the offseason. We're excited about the draft show and at the same time, three times a week during the regular season. So it's it's uh, it's a lot of fun doing the show. We want to continue doing it and appreciate the audience that we've built that you guys have uh, made the show worthwhile for us. So uh, again, you want to follow us on social media. We're all good and I appreciate the comments and uh, please leave your comments on YouTube after the show's over. But uh and can't thank everybody enough that to for promoting the show. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, so we'll say goodbye for today. So for Mario Heron, Josh Pale, I'm Dave Pale. We'll see you next time. Love you more than my future stepson. <laughs>